I am walking under the cliffs on what is known as the cliff bottom pavement. It's wise not to walk along this when it's very, very sunny because the bright white walkway and bright white cliffs make it quite literally a dazzling experience. So I've left Brighton, but in many ways I haven't. Whilst my destination might think of itself as a separate entity, a standalone village, to all official intents and purposes, it's a suburb of the city of Brighton and Hove. I am about to fact the hell out of Rottingdean. Roll titles. Behind me is Challoners. This is the oldest home in Rottingdean. The current building dates from the late 16th century. The cellars are about a century and a half older than that. It also contains a mulberry tree that is almost 400 years old and is regarded as one of the largest in the world. I presume that's in the garden rather than in the house, but we're the rich people, who knows? Anyway, we're not that interested in this mansion house. We're more interested in the farm labourers' cottages down the road. Most specifically, one Challoner's Cottages, which as you can see from the blue plaque, is the former home of the Copper family, who weren't police officers, but were pioneering English roots singers. They passed down their close harmony, a cappella, folk songs through the family from the 16th century onwards. They came to national attention in 1898, and many, many generations later, they continue to tour and record. Although they're very heavily linked with Rottingdean, most of the current members have moved far, far away to Peacehaven, about two miles that way. Several generations of the Copper family are commemorated and buried here in the churchyard of St Margaret's Parish Church, as is the legendary Irish blues rock guitarist Gary Moore. The church itself was the scene of tragedy in 1377. England and France were, as they often are at times of history, at war with each other. When a raiding party arrived on a nearby beach, the villagers took shelter in the church, only for the French raiders to burn it to the ground with everybody inside. Probably the most famous former resident of Rottingdean is the racist author Rudyard Kipling, who is commemorated in the village today with Kipling Cottage, Kipling Gardens, a local newsagent sells Kipling cakes. But in fact, Rudyard only lived here, here, at the Elms for six years, from 1897 to 1903, before moving 25 miles away to Burwash, which is almost in Kent. Why did he leave? Because he was sick of fans gawping through his windows and knocking on his door. Similar happens today. I know that my fellow YouTube superstars, Zoella and Alfie Days, recently had to move from one part of Brighton to another to get away from fans ringing their doorbell. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask my own army of fans to please respect the privacy of Mr Adam at all times. Thank you. After chasing a squirrel round Kipling Gardens, or at least those parts of it I'm allowed in, I head off into something that looks worryingly like the countryside. This windmill Beacon Mill is an iconic image of Rottingdean. Heck, it's even on their bins. This is a pitch and putt golf course that I have played on many times, always in terrible fear that a wayward ball would hit a car passing by on the A259. Yet the sport which historically this location is best known for isn't golf. There was a cricket pitch right here for well over a century. Indeed, the first recorded instance of a game in the village was in 1758, making Rottingdean one of the oldest cricket clubs in the world. Famously, the most runs ever scored from a single ball, 67, took place right here. There were no boundaries in those days. The ball ran all the way down the hill and probably hit a horse and cart passing by on the 8259. So that's Rottingdean then. Well, actually, I've barely scratched the surface. I haven't even got onto the pubs yet. I may well have to come back another day. Next week on Fact Me Up, it's Halloween. Join us as we run round the top 10 most haunted Brighton pubs. Ooh.